So it's not to say that there's different people say, well, if you are a larger organisation, you may have different people in different communication systems supplied. And what happens if that person's off sick and not there or on holiday? What impact does that have on your business or that invoice is sitting there waiting to be paid? And ultimately, one thing that's been adding to it, we need to retain retain that document for seven years. So we didn't put the information in stage. The next phase is doing the invoice matching. So doing a three-way match is to make sure that the goods that have been the invoice for have been uh, received and check with the goods in department to make sure they've received the delivery notes. We then have to make sure that the goods that have been received match the purchase order. Now, historically, before we implement the institutions, which I have to say, what I'm talking to you about today, we now all use in-house. Um, but what's happened beforehand was when an invoice was coming uh, when a, when a goods were coming in, they come into our goods bin. The first thing that you would do is you would copy that in that delivery note. Some people would look at your copy that I mean store a copy of it in the goods in department, and a copy of it or the original would go to the accounts department. So they're already duplicating the information. Now I don't know if that's a similar process you see within your businesses, but that was certainly happening here. And the time it was taken to come from the goods bin to um, the accounts department was getting longer and longer due to the amount of information that was coming in. So now what's happening is documents are being scanned and sent straight away to the accounts department to be processed, which is speeding up that whole process. So once we've gone through the three-way match, we then need to say, okay, we can then pay the information. So it has a query on the invoice, it has to go through the query management. So it has to go on to someone who checks with uh, the originator of the purchase goods to make sure that the information is correct and that it can be processed and can be moved on to the next stage. And all this information needs to be documented and retained for seven years in filing HMRC if the tax man happy. And finally, once that's all been done and approved, we then go through the payment process. And again, once we're all blind, we have to retain the information for seven years. So there's lots of information that's being stored in filing cabinets that doesn't need to be. And once we've gone through the whole process, we have to comply with UK GAP and HMRC regulations in terms of the document storage um, and who can and can't see that information. So we have got a customer down in London who uses us a number of years and has multiple machines throughout the world. They've got about 35 sites globally and a long time in the United for us in each of these locations. And when the, uh, the account manager was obviously he's in charge, so I had to step down there and had a review with them probably 18 months to a year ago to look at how the machine was behaving and look at the, why the number of documents that were being copied on the machine had dramatically gone up around the world. It was because they were processing more and more invoices. So the easy thing for us, for us to have done is just upgrade the machine and give them bigger machines, which okay, it would be a skill fix, but it would be a short term. So rather than doing that, we sat down and said, okay, why is there so many big invoices? How can you help improve the whole process of managing these invoices? What are you doing? What are your concerns with your current process? And we sat down and we looked at what's going on, where the information is going within the business, and what kind of costs were involved. Now, because this process wasn't their core business, they didn't know how much it costs for an invoice to come in and be moved around the business, and what kind of costs were hidden behind invoices not being paid on time because they weren't being approved and processed. So when we sat down and actually looked at it, they were spending over £220,000 a year to process invoices, which to me seemed astronomical. Yes, they were making good money, they were doing great turnover in the business, but £221,000 a year to process an invoice seemed some crazy money. And that was between the 35 sites that they've got. We sit down and say, okay, why are you doing it that way? Well, what, what else is concerning you? So what the time it takes to process an invoice? Because they've only got five members of staff to manage the team to actually approve invoices when they come in. And those five members of staff are constantly flying around the globe visiting the 35 sites that they've got. So it's very hard for them to actually afford the invoices. So what they've done is they said, private company. We're making sure that one of the signatures comes into one of their offices at least every two weeks to inspect the invoices so they can approve them. Which, in theory, is a great idea. But in practice, it rarely, rarely happens. Because they don't have 
time to step into their office, to start their legal office, to accuse them. And when they were, they were grabbing their legal office and running out the door. And their legal office were being put in their briefcases, in their travel bags, and eventually were accused. So that had a detrimental effect because they were moving legal offices left, right, and centre. And what that meant for the company is they were paying their suppliers. They were doing it on stock. They were not paying their legal offices. They were also having their early discount payments removed because they weren't paying on time. So if they were going out posing for a job based on their early payment discounts, when it came to the paying legal offices, because they paid late, they'd not step it up their bottom line because they weren't posing for the legal offices. So they asked us to really put in place a solution that's going to help reduce that. And because they've got fairly fast flight to start the day, they had no standardised procedure to process these incoming invoices. They wanted to make sure that every office throughout the globe was processing invoices in the same way as we went forward to make sure they were being paid on time and they were remaining in our stock by their suppliers. So you please sit down for a second. Imagine you're a greenfield site. come in uh, to the company being scanned and sent to the head office to be processed. So most of them will arrive at the head office in London, but around 10% will be sent to the other locations throughout the world. And they wanted all those documents to be scanned in and sent to the head office to be processed. They wanted the information to be automatically extracted. So they had around 500 different suppliers. They wanted the invoice to be placed on the document feeder, especially if it's with the scan button, have information automatically extracted from the invoices based on order number and purchase order, well, invoice number and purchase order number, without someone having to sit there and manually copy information from invoices into their, say, account package. Once they've done that, they want the information to be stored for seven years securely and restricted, well, restricted access, as you can see that. So beforehand, all the invoices would have been stored in the filing cabinet, and anybody who was a company could go to that filing cabinet open it up, and in essence, take away all their suppliers. They wanted to make it as secure as possible. <coughs> they wanted an electronic workflow process. So once those invoices have been scanned in, the approver receives those invoices electronically. So they can be anywhere in the world. Log on, view the invoice, approve them, and send it off for processing and payment. Now once they've done that, the final phase was to send off an, an electronic payment process via SAGE. So we, we sat down and said, okay, we, we can do that. Um, we need to do some investigation to see really what happened in each of these phases, each of these processes, but we can do that. And what we did, we put together this solution where invoices can come in, and the first thing they do is go into the account department, fill up their photocopier, the log function device, place it on hopper, and they scan all their invoices button. So they can back scan all of the invoices, put them on the hopper, and that then goes straight into the document management system. When it hits the system here, we extract the key information that they've asked us to extract from those invoices. So they don't, they don't have to manually type in and have the potential errors of someone typing in key information into their account package. And it goes straight through to the accounts department to actually kick that off the workflow process. So she can send that invoice off to the correct person to authorise it. So they go off the authorised, if everything matches up, everyone's happy, then they go straight off for payment. If they're not, it routes back through to the accounts department to be queried why the invoice hasn't been approved, and then when everything's happy, all the information is uploaded into Sage, and people get paid. The end user can then search within the document management system based on the invoice number, the supplier name, and pull back and retrieve invoices if there's any queries. So what I'm going to do is just run you through that process or that demonstration just to show you what happens when invoices come into the business. So what I've got here is just some unstructured, I shared a demonstration earlier about structured and unstructured data. These are unstructured bits of information, which means there's no preconceived or preset out right format 